Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends, and welcome back to another video of your host, Andrew. What we're gonna be doing today is a comparison video between these two pens. So we've got a Pelican M600 and a Pelican M200. Now, I won't be talking so much about the colors. I will mention it um, just for your reference, but I'll be talking more about the actual physical pens because they do come in a range of different colors and some colors which you may prefer and some you may not. And they, that might have a, a little bit of a, a deciding factor on which you may choose. But I thought it might be fun just to have a look at those today. Uh, before we do that, however, I thought I would talk a little bit about my Arushi journey. Now, I do have Stein I do have timestamps, so if this isn't of interest, feel free to skip this section and then we will roll the titles and then get on with the rest of the video. So before we do that, however, and if you do want to stick around, I've got um, some Arushi news for you. So over the past month, I have been experimenting with Arushi lacquer and mainly um, an Arushi lacquer called Kijomi. Um, lacquer, or Kijomi Arushi, which is essentially um, a, a purer version of, um, of Arushi. It's um, brown, it's transparent, and it's used uh, predominantly for uh, foundation layers, I believe, and some finishing layers. Do correct me if I'm wrong, uh, or do correct me if I'm wrong, I should say. And it's also used for this technique called the Fuki Arushi technique, which is essentially wiping on this Kijomi um, Arushi and wiping it off curing it, sanding it, and then repeating it for several times. Now, Mikhail from Tamaniri Studios, I think may be doing a Fuki Arushi video down the, down the line, and he'll have uh, probably more in-depth um, sort of information on how to do this technique. Far better explained than I ever will. But I feel very happy with how I've actually got to this point. We've got some chopsticks here, which will be up for sale. Um, I've just got a little bit more curing to do to these, but they, for all intensive purposes, they are ready for, for sale. Um, for those which are worried, even though um, Arushi is poisonous, once it's cured, it is um, food grade. And you can use these as regular chopsticks. Now, I don't know how to use chopsticks, but I, I, I can sort of manage to pick up bits of chicken. Anyway, um, I have tested these out and I am still alive. So, yes. <laughs> um, if you are interested in these, then as I say, they will be on my Etsy. Um, at some stage, or you can just drop me a message on Instagram. Uh, they aren't expensive, and they'll be around about the 20, 25 pound um, region, which I think is quite a fair price for the work which is actually presented and having yourself a nice bit of traditional Arushi in your house. So, so. we have got, and apologies, I keep getting this um, uh, pronunciation um, incorrect, but I think we've got some misquette or maquette, or misquette? But um, this is from Arizona, and this is a wonderful, wonderful wood. We've got a little bit of walnut here. Then we have got some olive wood. And then lastly, we have got some London plain. And they're all beautiful, beautiful woods. And they seem to be taking the lacquer. Um, it seems to be passing the, the fingernail technique, which is fantastic. And I will be getting a pen from Gilbert House Pens very soon, not only in full review, but also to Arushi Lacquer. So look out for that. Okay, so that's enough of me rabbiting on about Arushi. So let's roll the titles and get on with this. Right, ladies and gentlemen, so we've got two pens here. We've got the Pelican M600 here on the right or my left, and then we've got the Pelican M200 on my right or your left. And these are very, very similar pens. Now, there are subtle differences between the uh, M range or the Souveron range from Pelican. And it really comes down to trim and finish at the end of the day. Uh, you start off with the Pelican M200, which comes with a range of steel nibs pictured here, very minimal trim. And then from the M400 range upwards, we start um, getting into gold nib fountain pens. So what you'll see on here, and as you can see, we do get a little bit more trim under the hood. So what we're gonna to do to start with, we're gonna go over the features of these pens, and then we're gonna talk about the, the differences. So the Pelican M200, I'm gonna put up the stats for now. 
wonderful. And what do you get for your 80 to 130 pounds, depending on where you buy this from? So the Pelican M200 or M205 range is the introductory range to the Suvron range. And it is a really good place to start off if you're looking to get into Pelican and you want to get a, a pen nib, which is quite bouncy. Um, with exemption of perhaps the M1000. So the M200 is a really beautiful nib. We've got this um, steel nib and I believe we've got a medium on here, yes. But it's one of the springiest um, steel nibs which I've actually used. And maybe not by design, but actually in execution it is. And I have to say it's a really wonderful writer. Now the one discerning difference between this and this pen, you do get more feedback on the M200. So that's something which may be or may uh, be a bit of a hindrance to you, or you might really enjoy it. So let's start from the, the top and work our way down before we uh, wrap it on too much. So on the top, we've got a nice finial with this crown like finial. It sort of jets out a little bit and then it comes onto this fantastic pelican beak, plain white material with a gold ring. And then it says pelican Germany. I don't think this is actually part of the Souverain range, but um, it is part of the M range, which is the Souverain range <laughs> in my uh, sort of layman's understanding. And uh, feel free to um, correct me if I am wrong on that. But anyway, we then got each year, Pelican comes out with some special editions. And this was the, the Golden Swirls. And I have to say, I love this material. As you sort of rotate it, you get these really beautiful pearlescent um, finishes. And you can actually see your ink level and the filling mechanism underneath and in certain lights, which is great. I, I quite like that. And then coming to the end, you've got the uh, a gold ring with a piston uh, turning knob, which is one of the best piston turning knobs in the business. Okay, so that's the Pelican M200. Now I'm gonna hold up the pen here, which is the Pelican M600. Gonna give you the stats for this. And then I'm going to go over the overview of this pen as well. Okay, so starting from the top, we've got the same crown-like top. It's a little bit more bulbous and stands out a little bit more. And then again, we've got the Pelican with its um, solo um, chick on there. Lovely Pelican bill, plain red cap. This time we've got the um, Pelican Souverain Germany. So this definitely is a Suvron pen. And I think from the M400 up, that is considered the Suvron. I'm pretty certain on that. Uh, then we've also got an extra gold ring on here. So that is the only real subtle difference between the two at the moment, if I hold them both up, is the fact that you've got a slightly wider, wider ring um, and uh, followed by a secondary ring. Coming on to the main body, we have on this particular edition, got the red tortoiseshell or tortoiseshell red. And we've got this lovely tortoiseshell material again. You can hold it up to the light and you can see a little bit of the assembly underneath. And that is quite useful for being able to see your ink levels. Although this is definitely more opaque than the gold swirls. Coming down to the end, we've got two gold rings and then again, a piston turning knob. Now the shape of this pen is very similar to the Pelican M200. It's a little bit wider and a little bit taller. Okay, then underneath the hood, we have got a gold ring on the collar here, and then we've got a 14 karat gold nib, which come in a variety of different sizes. And again, we've got some plastic threads. So not too different, but the subtle differences between the two really are the amount of trim which you get. Okay, so one thing which we've got to also consider is the writing experience, and both offer a absolutely fantastic experience in that. So, what does the Pelican M600 actually offer over the M200? Well, it's smoother, it's juicier, and generally speaking, it's a little bit more pleasant. Having said that, the M200 is no slouch, and I do like the pencil-like feedback which you do get on the nib. So, without further ado, what we're gonna do is we're now gonna move on to doing a writing sample, and then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end of this video. So, join me in the next section. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to do this as a voiceover because stupid me forgot to turn my microphone on. So I'm having to do this as a voiceover. I do apologise. So we're going to start off with the Pelican M600. I was going to initially put the microphone close to the paper, but I've had to redo this video about five times a day, um, partly because I'm a little bit out of um, practice, very tired. 
um, due to breaking um, the <laughs> radius in my uh, thumb and yeah um, it's taken a little bit of a toll on me so I am still giving you the actual sort of overview but I'm now just gonna have to give you my th final sort of thoughts and feelings um, in terms of the actual writing experience within this part of the video so we've got the diamine oxblood in this uh, pen and it's a really beautiful pairing I have to say and the actual feeling on this Ayush paper is absolutely wonderful now the Ayush paper does have problems with some dry inks I've noticed but generally speaking I have not had really any issues whatsoever in a medium nib upwards which is what we've got on the upcoming M200 now as you can see the actual sort of figure of eights which we've done there has got a little bit of expression in there and it is not too bad and this is a extra fine 14 karat gold nib as well okay so next up we are going to move on to the M200 and I have to say that I really love the writing experience with this and yes like I've said in the previous section you do get a little bit of um, pencil like feedback but I find actually on this paper it to be very very pleasant and not scratchy at all both pens don't hard start or have any issues with flow and I am very very thankful for that so yeah this is the Pelican M200 and this today we have got some Sailor Manio Nadashiko loaded into here and it's a, a wonderful wonderful ink and very very pleasant to write with and on certain papers it does have some really nice chroma properties within it so let's just get this uh, finish written out and then we will go on to the next section now but before we do do that uh, you will notice that actually when we come to do the the line variation in a second you will see that actually um, not only is the flow fantastic, it does offer some really nice expression. So yes, as you can see, as we do these figure of eights, you really do get some lovely expression in the line. And yes, you do have to exert just the tiniest bit of pressure to get that, but it's just lovely being able to have that. And I'm very, very grateful for having a very expressional um, pen, which doesn't cost too much. So this is a steel nib, and yeah, I really do like it. Right, what we are going to go on to next is we're going to have a look at uh, the actual line variation between the M600 and the M200. Now, the actual nib grade is a medium on the steel nib, and I'm going to do some vertical lines and some horizontal lines. So we'll start with the verticals, and now we're going to do it with the M600. And as you can see, hopefully, I'm going to zoom it in, and you'll be able to see that there isn't actually too much difference in uh, the actual line width. Now when we do the horizontal lines, actually, interestingly, the um, there is a little bit more of a difference. The, I think the M600 is a little bit more consistent in terms of its actual line quality. So that is quite interesting. So, yeah, I, I, I've, it's not really a criticism, just really more of an observation. Having said that, it does sort of make me wonder if the extra fine from the Pelican really is a truly extra fine, or if the actual medium is sort of verging more on the finer side on the M200. Anyway, those are just my observations. So uh, please join me in the next section where I'll give you my final thoughts. Right then, ladies and gentlemen. So who are these pens for? So we've got an M200 and an M600. Now, before I get onto that, I just want to address a few things which have not necessarily bothered me too much, but something I want to try and avoid um, seeing in the future. A few months ago, I did a steel versus gold nib fountain pen review, and my opinions are clearly controversial with um, some people, to the point that some people were um, almost attacking my character, well, it felt like it was. I was very gracious in response. I did not get uh, defensive, and I, I, I'm not an, a defensive kind of person. I will share my thoughts and opinions, and if people don't like it, that's fine. Um, I appreciate that. You know, not everyone is going to share the same viewpoint, and that's what makes humanity a wonderful place to, to live in. Um, people do have different choices, and not everyone's going to love a pelican. Not everyone's going to love the pen which I've got coming up next week, but. These are pens which I've bought and pens which I dearly love using. And in terms of the gold versus steel nib video, well, I like steel nib pens. I really do. I, I think they provide excellent value for money. And just to have 
you know, to spend more money on a gold nib for it, for the sake of it being a gold nib, I just don't see necessarily the value in. Now, I appreciate that people don't agree with this. I appreciate the fact that um, some gold nibs are a little bit softer and that's perfectly fine. Now, I certainly, and I will agree, some gold nibs which are absolutely fantastic and outperform steel. But when we talk about value for money, I really like this pen, just as a, a little bit of a hint. <laughs> right, so let's, um, without further ado, crack on to the actual uh, comparisons. So the M600, with all its trim, its pedigree, its history, it's a beautiful, beautiful pen. I mean, when we have a look at this uh, Duotone nib, it's really, really handsome, absolutely handsome. And it's a very wet writer, especially for an extra fine. Um, I really love um, writing with this pen. It is stellar and I have got no regrets in buying this whatsoever. Even though what I'm gonna say next about this and we'll get to it in a moment, um, it really is just absolutely fantastic. I, I, I love it to bits. And this red tortoise shell or tortoise shell red it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful material. It's, it's wonderful to write with. It's got a little bit more heft to it than the M200 as well. And sometimes a little bit more weight can help ease with certain things. But for longer writing sessions, that leads me onto this pen, the M200. So the M200 comes with a bit more of a boring looking nib, but that's perfectly fine. You know, I didn't buy the, the nib, so I didn't buy the pen just uh, for the, the design of the nib. Sometimes that influences my decisions. Um, sometimes it doesn't, but it, it's a bit more plain and the actual trim and finish um, is not up to the same sort of standards as the M600. But that gold swirl material does look really, really beautiful. I like the fact that you do get an ink window on here as well. I think that's really, really useful. So there are certainly uh, some characteristics of using the M200, which actually beat the M600. And that's just my opinion. <laughs> essentially at the end of the day. They are both beautiful pens and if we hold them up together you can see they are both stellar. Now if you are a person which don't like um, posting your caps you're not going to get any benefit from the M600 in terms of its length or its um, size. The diameters of the, both of the pens are pretty much identical. So yeah that really leaves it for today's um, video. Thank you for listening. Now in terms of what we've got coming up let's just uh, reach over here. We have got some pens from Laban. Um, and these were very kindly donated to me uh, for review and they will be sent back um, from Colt Pens. And that leads me on to my final uh, bit of news. Um, if you have missed my previous videos, I am now doing some affiliations with Colt Pens, which, well, what does that mean? Well, it means you can get some discount. And if you put in Pens Friends UK 10 at uh, checkout on Colt Pens, you will get yourself 10% discount. Now, I will stress um, in advance, my opinions still will be of my own, just because these have been uh, kindly sent to me by Colt Pens. Um, it won't change my opinion of these pens. So we'll see how these um, actually sort of span out over the next um, three weeks. We have got three pens in here, and I will do one review a week, just to sort of spread out the content. And then we've got some inks um, down the line to review. And we also have got um, an inkless pen Yes, an inkless pen to have a look at. And that looks very, very interesting. So yeah, uh, do stay tuned for those videos. And if you'd like to see those videos, do consider hitting that bell icon uh, to be reminded of those upcoming reviews. And please do consider leaving a comment down in the section below about content you might like to see in the future. So that is it for today's video. Thank you for listening and stay tuned till next week. Goodbye for now.